Thank you very much for taking the time to stop by today. Just give it a couple more minutes and then we can begin. Uh, just, I wanted to take the opportunity uh, regarding the uh, this format of the YouTube live stream uh, to, first of all, to say hello to everyone. And I hope that your week is off to a fine start. And also to take the opportunity just to give some uh, initial impressions, thoughts, comments, reactions, uh, for what it's worth, I suppose. Uh, my reactions to the recent announcement regarding the BFI Sight and Sound uh, poll, or I should say the list, uh, based off of the critics poll and also the director's poll, or what's known as the critics poll and the director's poll. So it's done every 10 years. So the last one was done in 2012 and now on this occasion of 2022, we have uh, we have uh, a new list or new lists, I should say. And they're uh, quite uh, quite interesting lists, if I do uh, say so myself. But uh, before we get into that, uh, let me just let me just uh, oops, where am I? There we go. Just wanted to just get ready here. So uh, the the uh, the chat is open. The live chat is open. So, oh, Baptiste Andre is here. Nice to see you. Great, great to see you. A wave of the hand and a wave back to you. So, thank you so much. Uh, just give it another moment or two, and we can begin. So, I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's now Monday evening where I am. So, I, I uh, am getting ready to go to sleep soon. But I thought, uh, what the heck? Uh, the sight and sound poll or the sight and sound lists came out, and I was. Uh, I was, uh, uh, I've been asked by a number of people to, to talk about this. So, uh, again, thank you very much for expressing an interest in what it is I might have to say about this, a very interesting list or set of lists, I should say. Um, I, again, I'm not holding myself out to be any kind of expert or anything alike of the sort. So I'm, I'm here as a very kind of casual observer of these sorts of things. And I also understand that for what it's worth as well, you know, lists are lists and lists can be things where people might agree or might disagree. People might have their own takes, might have their own lists per se uh, and the like. So totally, totally understood. Um, and so I'm uh, very much uh, uh, sympathetic to those sorts of viewpoints as well. Uh, so, but uh, with all that being said, I should just say too that uh, I find these lists to be uh, very uh, useful for a number of reasons, one of which I think is that it brings certain films into the conversation. Again, whether one agrees with the actual ranking slots themselves or not, I think it's uh, without a doubt uh, very useful at least to bring these films into the fore, into the conversation. And I should say as well that uh, that's certainly the case, I think, in terms of uh, my sense of how people are reacting to uh, some of the uh, the, the list uh, uh, entries themselves, especially perhaps, or in particular perhaps, what is uh, considered to be, or what has been named at the top of this list, uh, the critics' poll list. A very interesting and fascinating selection, uh, that's for sure. So, uh, But just very briefly, let's just talk about it. But before we go into that, uh, here we, let me just see the comments here. So Finn is here, hello. It's nice to see you. Damien is here, hello. Uh, Seth Walsh is here, it's nice to see you. Uh, and you s talked about the Battle of Algiers, and indeed, yes, the Battle of Algiers does appear. Algiers, excuse me, does appear on the list. So uh, it's it's uh, uh, very uh, very nice uh, coincidence, my dear friend. Uh, Mark is here. It's hello. It's nice to see you. Matthew is here. Uh, Mix memorabilia is here. It's nice to see you. Uh, and. Uh, uh, Baptiste Andre continues, and it's interesting to see differences between the director's list and critics' list. That's for sure. Um, and uh, Damien continues, I'm glad to see uh, Jeanne Dillman get its respect, but for me, not the greatest film of all time. Definitely a great one, though. That's uh, very, uh, uh, I respect that comment very much. So thank you so much for that. So yes, I, I guess we can get into just, again, uh, there will be 10 years or so, uh, more or less, to consider these and to uh, to wonder about them, to talk about them, to discuss them. 
and to evaluate, assess, reassess, whatever the case may be. So we have another 10 years or so. And of course, this is uh, a list that is, of course, made up of uh, choices made by uh, certain, uh, certain uh, people who have been selected for participation in these sorts of polls. And so, uh, of course, uh, this is, uh, you know, it, it perhaps therefore has, uh, has uh, it, a, a broad reach on the one hand, but also, as I say, uh, lists are lists. And so uh, they do have, uh, understandably and quite, quite, uh, uh, quite, uh, I think, naturally, a subjective sense about them, which means that people can disagree. And I think it's very healthy to disagree where one feels that way. So, and again, uh, that disagreement is good too, because it's part of the conversation, the ongoing conversation. Again, we will have this for 10 years or so. Uh, and also, that's not to say anything against uh, what lists have come prior to this 2022 list. I mean, there is still a validity when it comes to the previous lists from 2012 to 2002, et cetera, going back every you know 10 year increment. So, uh, so this is just a list that's caught in this particular point in time, a uh, very fascinating point in time, I should say. So, uh, yep. So with that, let's go to uh, well, well. Before that, let me just go one more time to the chat, and then we'll go from there. So. Um, let's see. Oh, Jared is here. It's nice to see you. Yes, uh, you say can't stay long, but you wanted to say hello. Um, and so it's, uh, and you say it's new to you. You're uh, learning about this or experiencing this for the first time. So thank you so much for this, Jared. I, I appreciate that. So, uh, again, just initial impressions. Nothing, I think, earth shattering or groundbreaking, I don't think. Um, so I, I when I, uh, first I heard about the the announcement timing, you know, the beginning of December. So I, I think along with many other people, was very curious. And so whenever, so that day, that morning, whenever the day it was announced, I suppose it was still, I guess, early hours for me in Tokyo, but I woke up that morning, whatever it is, and I just uh, decided to check my phone to see what the that announcement was. And I think I, I checked the director's list uh, first. And so I checked the director's list, and as we know from those who saw the director's list for 2022, the top choice uh, was uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, right? So uh, that was, uh, uh, that was oh, that was very interesting. And then I, I saw that it was the director's list, and I then uh, clicked on the critics list, or uh, the results of the critics poll, and I scrolled down, and my goodness, when I saw what was uh, selected as being the first or the top of that list, I was... Very, uh, I must admit, I was very, very surprised uh, because, uh, um, uh, you know, um, uh, what was it? Um, the the work itself, uh, you know, Chantal Ackerman's work, uh, Jean Dillman, uh, Jean Dillman, Vantois, uh, Quai de Commerce, uh, 1080, Bruxelles, uh, is a work that I think had been part of the 2012 list. Uh, but it was somewhere, I think, in, I want to say, it was in the top 50 or so. And um, so sometimes one gets a sense, perhaps mistakenly or so, who knows, that the films that more or less linger around the top five or top 10 might creep up or might go up to that potential top spot. So I was thinking in my head, the back of my head, oh, maybe it will be uh, Citizen Kane again, or maybe Vertigo will top the list because it's it's around that time or around that part of the list from 2012, or maybe uh, my my own personal uh, my own personal uh, uh, I was rooting personally for Tokyo Story. I was hoping Tokyo Story might get that top spot and uh, occupy it for uh, you know occupy the top spot for uh, for the next ten years or so. It would have been a very interesting part of the discussion. It's still in the in that top ten or the top five, uh, but uh, and that's great. It's there, but. I was thinking, oh, maybe it would be part of that that discussion. Who knows? But I was scrolling down, and I was uh, surprised by a number of things as I was scrolling down. So, uh, and uh, so I was like, wow, wow, this is interesting. Uh, um, I think one of the 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 surprises uh, was, uh, for instance, a portrait of a lady on fire uh, being uh, around that area. What was it? It was in. Uh, I'm scrolling to number thirty. Uh, so it was uh, scrolling down. I was seeing uh, Latalant, uh, number 34, and then Psycho, uh, Mirror, an eight and a half, tied at number 31, and then Portrait of a Lady on Fire at number 30. Wow. And then with Taxi Driver, 29, and then uh, Daisies, 
uh, the uh, Vera Hitalovath work from 1966 to 28, and then Showa 27. Incidentally, uh, just a quick plug, I just uploaded a video about the Criterion Collection release of Vera Hitalova's work, Daisies, which received a Criterion Collection Blu-ray release earlier this year. So just in case you're interested, after this live chat is, or after this uh, live stream is over, you can check out my, my video discussion on that work, which also uh, happens to be on the the, the sight and sound poll list. So, uh, but uh, that was a, a very uh, interesting surprise for me. And then I was just scrolling down further and I was seeing uh, titles that emerged. Um, uh, I, I was uh, very happy to see, for instance, Meshes of the Afternoon being so high up on the list. It was in, I think, the previous list before, uh, but it was now uh, this high up. That's a really fascinating work, by the way, Meshes of the Afternoon. It's, what have been, it's, it's been one of my great dream projects to try to talk about the work, that work, and also the works of uh, Maya Darren in general. But that is a great kind of mysterious creepy, almost horror film-like film. So Meshes of the Afternoon, very, very fascinating stuff. Uh, and then it's also great to see uh, Agnes Varda uh, uh, represented so well, and Cleo from 5 to 7. Uh, and also, uh, uh, there was somewhere earlier, uh, somewhere earlier in those, I want to say around the 50s or so, um, uh, what was it? It was, um, uh, gosh, it was The Gleaners and I, I think, right? So... Uh, it was nice to see that. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I have the list up right now. Oh, here it is, 67. Yes, yeah, so that was very fascinating as well. Uh, Gleaners and I at 67. Now, I, I, I personally, maybe if I had to choose uh, what films of Agnes Varda I would have uh, liked to have seen on the top 100 list, I would have uh, pointed to Vagabond, which if you know the director's poll list, you'll find Vagabond on that list, I think very fascinatingly so. But Gleaners and I, that's a very... A very interesting um, uh, a choice indeed. Um, anyone who's interested, of course, in the works of Agnes Varda, uh, I can point you in the direction of the great Criterion box set that was made, I think, a year ago or so. Uh, and uh, we had a great discussion series on that on this channel. In fact, on each of the films included in that wonderful set, including, of course, Cleo from 5 to 7, which, going back to my earlier discussion point, uh, is uh, kind of high up on the list. Uh, very, very wonderfully so, I should say. Uh, and then, you know, you scroll down a little bit. And I'm, of course, I'm not going through all the, the titles, but just uh, a few examples here. And then I noticed, oh, The Godfather is at number 12. So I was wondering, oh, that means maybe The Godfather Part 2 will be somewhere on this list. I didn't see it yet. And then I reached the end of the list and I couldn't find The Godfather Part 2 on the uh, the critics poll list anyway. I think it appears on the director's list, but not on the critics list. So that was a big surprise for me, the omission of The Godfather Part 2. Uh, uh, I... I I do. I know in previous lists, uh, the temptation has been to group the Godfather and the Godfather Part Two together. I actually don't agree with that approach. I think they they should be regarded as separate films, separate works. Although I understand this the spiritual close knit connection between the two, of course, but I regard them as separate works. And be that as it may, you know, with that in mind, I find the Godfather Part Two to be one of the most um, one of the most fundamentally uh, important works of American cinema uh, of the of the late twentieth century, and so uh, to to see it not uh, 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 not uh, uh, be included in the top one hundred, I thought was a very surprising thing. I'd like to see uh, the maybe the films that were in the top two hundred, uh, because that top two hundred list is also very fascinating and and also very uh, I'm very curious about that. So maybe you might see titles uh, hit the top two hundred. So maybe uh, Godfather Part Two is there. Also, Raging Bull is not in the critics poll list as well, or uh, films like uh, maybe uh, a work like um, uh, uh, gosh. Um, uh, uh, I was also thinking maybe uh, a work like Pulp Fiction uh, might uh, enter this list, uh, the top 100 anyway, but I didn't find it at least in the uh, the critics poll list. But going back to my initial reaction, then I hit the the top 10 and I see uh, titles like Singing in the Rain, which is oh, a great man with a movie camera. Oh, that's great. And Mulholland Drive, In the Mood for Love. Oh, my goodness. This is great. I mean, they already have this aura, this, uh, this reputation that is... Uh, uh, that has carried with them uh, for the longest time, ever since their initial release earlier in this uh, 21st century, of course. And then we have works like uh, Claire Denis' Beau Travail, at number, what is it, number seven, which I thought, wow, that is a very interesting uh, uh, choice to have. And what a fascinating work that is. Uh, I had the great honor of being able to speak about that work a little bit on this channel, in fact. 
um, uh, in the context of the Criterion Collection release of that film, Beau Travail. What a great release that is, but uh, I must say that this, this, was, uh, this was very, very uh, interesting uh, to see this uh, Claire Denis work here. And then, of course, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and we get to, into uh, the, the five here, In the Mood for Love, and then Tokyo Story, which, as I said, I was personally hoping might hit the number one spot. Uh, for 2022, but uh, it did not. Uh, but that's no, uh, that's no shame at all. On the contrary, it's a, it's a really wonderful place to be in. And uh, then we have then number three, which is Citizen Kane. Uh, now, I've mentioned it a little bit before, but as I get older, uh, I find the, uh, my, uh, my regard for the work Citizen Kane just grows and grows and grows. And I find that to be, I mentioned, I think, yesterday, uh, in our uh, in the time remaining uh, after we finished the discussion on Superman for the quest for peace, I mentioned it yesterday where I thought it was perhaps one of the most perfect examples of cinema where you have a character that is both a hero and a villain at the very same time, and you have that set against the backdrop of the sweep of American history, uh, uh, the influence and perhaps corruptibility, who knows of of uh, media. Uh, mass consumption media and how that forms a, a, a true linkage, almost perhaps even dangerously so, who knows, uh, with the sweep of politics and history. Uh, and then of course, the, the story of the, the personal journey of, of Charles Foster Kane uh, uh, and the like. So, so that is perhaps the, one of the most perfect examples of, of uh, the hero-villain complex, right? Uh, among other uh, great points about that work. Uh, and then going further down the list, Vertigo. Now, Vertigo, as you know, was the, the number one choice for the 2012 poll. And uh, I've mentioned it a number of times on this channel, but I consider Vertigo, I always go back and forth. What is my favorite film of all time? Is it Vertigo, Late Spring, A Brighter Summer Day? Uh, I, I always, I'm, I always uh, uh, kind of I'm undecided, but it's always up there. I should point out that Vertigo, I think, I consider Vertigo to be my uh, one of my favorite films, even prior to the 2012 list, whatever it was, 10 years ago. So I'd have always regarded that film in, in such high regard. I see that film a lot. Uh, I, ca I never tire of that film. Uh, I find it to be one of the most twisted, complex, uh, kind of amorphous tales that is, uh, in many ways, a type of, of great example of, of uh, perfect imperfection. You know, perfect imperfection of cinema, uh, Vertigo is. Vertigo is perfect imperfection, and I mean that in a very complimentary way. I mean that with a great deal of respect. There is a, this twisted, almost uh, abundance of, of uh, twisted psychology that makes for not just compelling viewing, but also a real intimate link between, I think that's the, the great strength of Hitchcock works, is that is how it very much exemplifies uh, this idea of cinema and the, and the, uh, and psychology, uh, and human psychology. And so it really means that cinema is in many ways, not just an extension of what might be uh, deemed to be a, an expression of human psychology, but in fact could be said to be a real, uh, not just extension, but in fact a direct expression of human psychology, not just in terms of what we see on screen, but how we as audience members react to it. Uh, the, the audience reaction also is very much part of the, the psycho psychological uh, uh, impact of films by Hitchcock. And I think Vertigo is, uh, in many ways for me, the ultimate expression of that, uh, as well as being this, uh, this utterly compelling and romantic tale that is uh, always um, making me curious. And always uh, there are questions that still... I wonder about and I never can fully find the answer to, but that's part of the fun of watching the film is the, the, the journey that is everlasting, ever ongoing, maybe perhaps never to find an end, but that's fine uh, on an endless journey where you're accompanied by a work like Vertigo. Uh, so uh, that, was, uh, that's, that was my take on Vertigo and uh, I was so happy to have seen it uh, emerge at the top of the list uh, 10 years ago and still around that area. Number two, it's a really great place to be in. But then scrolling down, I was wondering, and I was hesitating for a moment. I was thinking to myself, before I scrolled down the, the screen to see what was number one, I was thinking to myself, what could it be? What could it be? And I was thinking in my head, what could it be? Could it be this film or that film? I don't know. And I scrolled down and voila, what do I see? But uh, 
uh, the Chantal Ackerman work, uh, Jeanne Dillman, uh, 23 Quai de Commerce, uh, 1080 Bruxelles. Wow, wow. Say that again, right? Jeanne Dillman, 23 uh, uh, Quai de Commerce, uh, 1080 Bruxelles is number one on this list for the year 2022. Now, that is, uh, that is incredible. That is really incredible. Um, now, this is going to get into a wonderful discussion over the whatever it is next 10 years as to do people really uh, do, do people agree with this or not? If people do agree with this, why do they agree with this? Or if people don't agree with this, why do they, don't they agree with this? And that discussion is great. Don't get me wrong. That is a great discussion to have. You do not need to agree with this list. You don't need to, uh, therefore, automatically assign your own number one choice as to greatest film of all time to be exactly this this uh, number one choice here. It's completely, uh, it's completely within your own purview and within your own choice uh, as uh, not just a consumer of cinema product, but also a lover of cinema and an admirer and appreciator of this film art. Uh, so, uh, but you know, it, it's it's wonderful. To, the, however, uh, in that, regardless of how one feels about the list, and regardless of how much importance and stock one uh, invests into a list like this, I think uh, there is still undeniably uh, this uh, idea, this compelling nature or need or curiosity to want to watch all the films that one hasn't seen that are listed here, and that's part of the fun of this. Then, and so for people who have not yet seen uh, Jean Dielman, Avantois, uh, Qui de Commerce. Uh, this is your opportunity, and it's a great opportunity to have. Uh, and you can watch it, and you can uh, maybe uh, uh, wonder about it, be curious about it, find all the great traits and strengths of it, uh, find, be curious about uh, some of the, uh, the mysteries of it, and there are indeed a lot of mysteries about that work. Um, what I find, what I find um, so... Uh, this is one example of uh, w what I find so uh, so uh, deeply uh, deeply profound about uh, this work, Jean Dillman, Vingt Trois, Quatre Vingt Bruxelles, which is the there is this thing that I I really love about films that show characters thinking. I love it when uh, films show characters thinking and they're on the screen and maybe they're not speaking out loud or maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but you can tell that there's something going on in their mind, something processing in their mind. Um, and you feel that so much. It's like it's bursting forth off of the screen. Uh, even in scenes within this film, Jean Dillman, um, uh, uh, Vantois, uh, even in, in scenes where you have uh, characters seemingly doing quote-unquote nothing, seemingly uh, occupying a sense of sort of, of quote-unquote vapid existence, uh, even in those scenes where things are seemingly quote-unquote not happening, <coughs> excuse me, there is so much thinking going on. There is so much thought going on and it goes towards a sense of, of a type of existential crisis. Uh, who am I? Am I really here? What is what is the I? Uh, what is the me? What is the I that is occupying this space in this given point in time where I'm seemingly doing nothing but everything at once? And things might have a seemingly maybe uh, 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 undramatic aspect to it. But in fact, in fact, if you know the film, and I don't want to go into too much detail for those who have not yet seen the film, there is so much at stake within the uh, the the uh, the time that transpires over the course of this work, Jean Dillman, Vingt-trois Quai de Commerce, Mille Quatre Vingt Bruxelles. So, uh, I actually think I had the opportunity uh, some years back on this channel just to speak a little bit about this work. Uh, I think it was something like I strongly recommend X Y Z film, and one of those video discussions was I strongly recommend Jean Dillman. Uh, Bruxelles. So it was um, uh, it was a wonderful opportunity for me to speak about that. I was also speaking about it in the context of uh, the great Criterion Collection release, uh, which uh, which if, right, it's right behind me. In fact, so uh, you have uh, an option of being able to watch it and and being able to evaluate it and assess it on your own terms, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, it was a uh, it was a very interesting uh, turn of events uh, in terms of this twenty twenty two list. 
Now, again, the critics poll result list. Now, uh, and also I should say that uh, just scrolling up and seeing some other uh, other titles. Again, I can't go through all of the titles on the list, of course, but uh, it was great to see some titles that we had seen uh, exist in some form or another in previous lists as well. And so it's great to see that. I, I must say, too, that it's nice to see Wanda, Barbara Loden film, Wanda, uh, being, I think, at number 48. That was really great as well. Um, it's. Um, I know it was in the previous list. I think it was uh, somewhere in the it was it was in the top 200 or so if i remember correctly or top 270 something but uh, i forget exactly but it was it was there but now it's it's in the top 50 so that's a really uh, fantastic film that's another film with a Criterion release. Incidentally, too, I think Criterion collection people uh, should uh, find themselves pretty happy because I think there are a lot of titles, about maybe uh, about 60% or so, I think, on the top 100 that are uh, titles we can find, at least in Criterion collections, physical media releases. So well done, Criterion. Uh, um, you know, some of the titles, of course, aren't, uh, uh, aren't in print. You know, it says, for instance, The Third Man or... Um, uh, La Dolce Vita or something like that. But uh, you know, incidentally, too, uh, it's great to see du Julie Dash's work, Daughters of the Dust, as well. I was wow, it was great, and Tukibuki as well. Uh, we spoke about Tukibuki on this channel uh, in the context of the Criterion Collection. I think individual spine numbered release for that film that was great as well, um, and uh, and others. Um, uh, I think there is, uh, yes, there were two titles that were the, uh, the Studio Ghibli films, Studio Ghibli films, which is Spirited Away and Totoro, My Neighbor Totoro. It's interesting to see them uh, close together that way. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but uh, uh, but the like. And I should say I mentioned uh, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite films is A Brighter Summer Day. So I see it uh, again emerge here at number 78. It's I'm very much hoping that A Brighter Summer Day uh, might uh, get closer to the top 10. You know, one of these uh, lists, maybe 10 years from now or 20 years from now, who knows? I, I really hope uh, that's that's uh, that's really up there for me. Um, and uh, speaking of Edward Yang, it was great also to see E.E. as well um, as uh, other films. Also, Parasite, uh, Bong Joon-ho's work, Parasite, uh, at uh, uh, number 90, right? Tied with E.E. and, and Ugetsu Monogatari and The Leopard. And Madame De and uh, and the so it was great to see that work. You know, I think uh, Parasite has a lot of potential longevity in terms of uh, uh, high regard going forward. So, uh, well done, well done for that. And then uh, rounding out the the top uh, hundred here, we have uh, a Tropical Malady, Israel, Once Upon a Time in the West, A Man Escape, Get Out. All well, those interesting choices. as Well, Get Out. I must admit, I I. Um, uh, that was a, also a film that uh, whose uh, appearance uh, surprised me. Uh, so uh, I I've I haven't seen it that many times. So I I'm, I'm uh, curious to try to uh, re-engage with it and, and watch it again. So uh, this is a great opportunity. So that's the that was the critics poll list. And then just scrolling now to the directors list again, we see a number of titles that are maybe carried over on both lists. Some titles aren't. Uh, and it's interesting to see what what is similar, what isn't. I should say that uh, it's great to see the uh, the Larissa Shapitka work, uh, the Ascent, uh, is right there. Although I look at the I look at the list and is uh, is the Larissa Shapitka's name spelled correctly? I'm not sure. There are two S's in the first name Larissa, or one S. I'm not sure. But uh, uh, in any event, uh, the Ascent is here, which is if you haven't seen this work, the Ascent. Wow, you got to go see it. And I think we also spoke about that film in the context of the great Criterion Collection Blu-ray release that happened, I think it was a year ago or so, something like that. So great, great release. Uh, please check that out if you can. Um, and um, uh, let's see, there, uh, The Seventh Seal also, uh, the Bergman film, Seventh Seal, I think it's on the director's list, but it wasn't on the the critics list, I think. So that was also, also Lawrence of Arabia, same thing. It's on this list here, but not on the other. Uh, so that was, uh, I also mentioned too, uh, it's great to see uh, the the strong prominence of the work Blade Runner. Uh, again, uh, it's, it's lovely to see that uh, uh, Blade Runner is so cool. You know, I have never, I've never uh, had the opportunity yet to speak about Blade Runner. It's a film that is uh it's uh, i've seen it a number of times over the course of my life but uh i admit it's i am so i think it's i'm so enamored by it, it it's kind of uh it's almost uh 
Uh, I don't know uh, if I'm ready to speak about it yet. You know, I'm, I'm not prepared, uh, w uh, intellectually equipped to speak about that work in a way that's appropriate to that film. Uh, it's, I hold it in such high regard. But uh, uh, and then just again, I'm, I'm sorry. Then going back to La Notte, the Antonioni work, La Notte's or uh, Don't Look Now, as well. Um, la Mama and La Putain. Uh, this is the Jean Eustache work. Now, this is uh, number fifty-three on the director's list. Now I'm, I'm. Uh, I hear through the grapevine that uh, a restoration is uh, is uh, forthcoming in 2023. And if that's the case, it would be wonderful at last to see a release of uh, La Mama et la Putain, uh, the works of Jean Eustache. Now, I was very fortunate to have been able a number of years ago to get, get the uh, a, a DVD uh, copy of it, which is right here. This is a Japanese DVD, which I think is out of print. And indeed, also, I have the... Uh, very fortunate to get the, have the VHS, the two tape VHS, uh, New Yorker video, but it'll be great. Hopefully if that gets a restoration and then maybe even a physical media release, uh, knock on wood as it, uh, as the saying goes, but uh, we shall see, uh, something perhaps to look forward to in 2023. Just to continue on also, come and see, uh, uh the, the, uh, from 1985, that's on the director's list. Vagabond, I mentioned as well. Uh, Agnes Varda film, that's on the director's list. Uh, and La Strada as well. Um, and let's see, just scroll here. Raging Bull as well. Uh, Woman Under the Influence, that's uh, great to see. And then uh, we see a number of films, again, um, uh, maybe some slight differences in the order, but uh, Jean Dillman, uh, 23 Kilo Commerce, uh, Mille Quatre Femmes Bruxelles is number four. 2001 A Space Odyssey is number one. Godfather is number three. Uh, Vertigo is number six. Uh, Tarkovsky's film Mirror, number eight. And eight and a half, which had been around the 30s, I think 31 in the critics list, is now here, number six in the director's list, et cetera, as well as Persona. Close up to the Curious Tommy or close up. It's nice to see the top 10 here for the. Um, for the uh, director's list. So, uh, so a lot of surprises, uh, some omissions, some inclusions, uh, but again, uh, wonderful, I think, uh, uh, topics uh, and great areas of discussion uh, for purposes of, say, the continuing cinema journeys of, of everyone concerned, everyone who might be interested. Now, uh, before I get to the chat, let me say too that, again, these are lists, and these are lists by people who have uh, their own choices and the choices are made for whatever reason you know uh, and those reasons are the, the reasons of those people and uh, the results are the results now that doesn't mean that you have to agree with such results you can vehemently disagree with such results and I think that's very healthy that's very very fantastic and it's, it's good to have those discussions uh, and it's good also to to uh, have the opportunity then to say what would be on your list as well and then uh, present uh, maybe to friends and people online or within the film lover community, etc., your own list. And then uh, that would be subject of debate as well, debate discussion. People might disagree or agree with your list, etc. So it's an ongoing conversation. But, um, you know, I encourage that. And I, I think it's a very healthy, uh, uh, ongoing discussion that we can have for the next 10 years or so. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with disagreement. There's nothing wrong with uh, even very passionately disagreeing. Uh, and the like. So uh, um, I, my strong encouragement or my strong hope, it would be that people can continue the discussions, uh, have a sense of mutual respect, even when there is disagreement, even when there is vehement disagreement. That's OK. That's OK, uh, because your choices are still ultimately your own. And those of people that you speak to are ultimately the choices of those people that you speak to. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's always about uh, this thing which we all love, which is cinema. And that's what it's the that's what it's about. That's the name of the game, the rules of the game, as it were. Uh, but uh, uh, yes, uh, this is I guess my very very uh, very maybe sh kind of shallow re response, I suppose, to uh, this recent uh, news about the sight and sound poll lists uh, for twenty twenty two. Very exciting. I think maybe just to conclude, I think if if um, if I had to say, I, I, I probably would say that I, I don't know if I would agree with all of the entries that I found uh, included on these lists. But again, that's just my own particular take. I don't think that uh, I'm in any way a type of, say, arbiter or a type of, of uh, a reasonable judge when it comes to a cinema tastes of uh, the general public, right? On the contrary, I think my 
I, I'm, I'm very much uh, uh, off the radar when it comes to uh, uh, that kind of um, my choices uh, and how it might relate to uh, the choices of people writ large. So I understand that gap that I have, but uh, yeah, I mean, I have, again, that's my own way of acknowledging that my choices can be uh, different and uh, might be, uh, in fact, somewhat different from what I see on these lists. But that doesn't mean that I find these lists to be in any way distasteful or in any way um, uh, uh, without any kind of merit or uh, utility or value. I do find them uh, very valuable. Uh, I, then, I don't necessarily then hold them to be uh, the be-all, end-all of cinema. I don't hold these lists at all to be... Uh, therefore, I must regard this work as number one and, and uh, uh, scoff at anyone who might uh, say otherwise. No, I don't agree. That, I don't uh, have that viewpoint at all. On the contrary, uh, this is a, a, a talking point or this is a point, uh, an opportunity to, again, uh, talk about uh, these films, which, uh, and it's wonderful too. I, I just going back to Jean Dumas, uh, 23, Nature de Commerce, Mio um, Catherine Bussel. Uh, the number one choice. Again, this is a film that I would say is, is not usually part of the conversation um, uh, that, uh, that, for instance, I have about cinema. You know, I don't talk about uh, this film every day, uh, but now it's part of the conversation. It's, it's a very exciting part of a conversation now, and it looks like it's going to be uh, ongoing at least for some time, which is wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And hopefully it'll encourage people who have not yet seen the film to give it a try. And you can give it a try and, and maybe not like it at the end of the day, but that's great. At least you gave it a try, right? And I admit too that when I first saw the film, uh, first saw the film, I was totally uh, taken aback. It, it was a very difficult film to process, but um, uh, uh, I think uh, it it has this way of, of, uh, of saying, sort of uh, occupying one's thoughts and, and uh, uh, really filling up a sense of uh, this curiosity that one has when one watches this film. At least that's how I felt. And it has this um, magnetic, hypnotic, poetic feel. Uh, and it has this rhythm uh, to it that is uh, almost like a, uh, it has this, uh, it transcends time and space in a manner of speaking. And then when things happen, even the tiniest detail, something happens that maybe is a little bit off. It's like uh, 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 the the movement of the earth or something like that. So uh, it's uh, it's a really uh, uh, wow. What it, it now it's part of the conversation. So that's uh, that's brilliant indeed, absolutely brilliant. So uh, in any event, my dear friends, that's just my very quick two cents, I suppose, when it comes to this sort of stuff. Uh, but now let's go. Um, and the Cinema Tech says, Hi, Dice K. I've always wondered if you have a dream criterion release. Mine would be The Devils by Ken Russell. That, it's a great, great choice. I, I would love to see The Devils. A good, proper release of The Devils. Um, that, that's, that, that film is... It's, oh, that's... Yeah, that is such a... That is such an important... Uh, especially when it comes to this idea of... of, of um, like free speech and censorship, among other things. That's really important. Um, Damien, you say, also in my opinion, Mulholland Drive is still the only film from the last 25 years to deserve really being on the list. I really like the new, other newer ones, but for me, they didn't really make that. Uh, that's a very fair point. Yes, uh, Mulholland Drive too. I'm a very uh, big admirer of that. Don't drink all the Coke, right? As they say in Mulholland Drive. Uh, Sucked, hello, it's nice to see you. And you say, uh, and uh, with a, a, uh, a super chat, thank you so much for the super chat. I'm very, very appreciative of this. You know, it's, uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm very flattered and honored by your monetary donations. You know, I'm totally not deserving of them, but the fact that you would make it like this, I'm, I'm very, very touched by it. Truly, really, thank you so much for that. Uh, sucked, thank you, sucked, uh, for your uh, uh, super chat donation. And you say, I think the point of the critics list is to get people into different kinds of movies while the directors might be trying to maintain the status quo. Oh, that's an interesting point. I never really thought of it in that way. Although I must say that there are a lot of similar overlaps, uh, quite a few in fact, uh, between the director's list selections and the critics list section. So uh, very interesting. But uh, Mark L, you say, uh, Mark, uh, you say, I've never heard of this film from Chantal Ackerman. Interesting to view this list and complete films we didn't see. Uh, yes, uh, Damien, you continue. I have been a huge fan of Sight and Sound now for 30 years. I absolutely love the publication. Mark, you continue. I know it's a classic. I've seen The Searchers from Ford and I didn't like it. Callum, it's your nice to see you. Had a quick browse of the list. Pretty good list. I've seen about 60 of them. 
It's a pretty good number, by the way. Seth, you say, Portrait of a Lady on Fire is my least favorite Criterion title I own. I'm willing to give it more tries, but I didn't find myself that affected by the love story and the ending didn't impact me. That's fair, fair enough. That's fair enough, my dear friend. Uh, Callum, you say, uh, although I have yet to see the film at number one, definitely need to get around to that. Uh, there's a great Criterion release uh, that I can recommend uh, if, you, uh, if you're interested. Um, Let's see. Uh, Seth Walsh, you say, I saw the film Rolling Thunder for the first time recently due to Quentin Tarantino top favorite film. And that was a great film. Oh, interesting. I wish you could do a revenge film series of discussion. That's an interesting suggestion. Uh, Jovial Joss, thank you. I saw your comment about uh, the uh, interview discussion I had with John um, uh, Mondo Celovic, uh and uh, about uh, Argento lists. So it's, it's great. I just responded to that comment, by the way. And you say, didn't think Vertigo would get dethroned. Um, that's, uh, Damien, you continue. Yeah, for me, I was sad not to see The Godfather Part Two or the great Fanny and Alexander of the Critics Poll. Although Fanny and Alexander and The Godfather Part Two do appear in the director's list, right? I think so. Mark, you continue. Uh, let's see, Seth, you say to Seth, well, not liking what the majority likes is fine. Uh, yes, uh, I agree. I agree. It's, and I actually, it's, um, there's, there's nothing wrong with uh, a good bit of disagreement. Nothing wrong with that at all, and it's not in any way. It's uh, there's there's no um, there, it's 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 perfectly fine. Um, and uh, uh, Nova Nova Omega is here. It's nice to see you. You say Citizen Kane and Metropolis are outstanding masterpieces. Yes. In fact, I was um, uh, let's see. I was uh, the first thing the first film I saw inspired by the list was to go and visit uh, Fritz Lang's Metropolis again. So. Um, I have a number of, I think I have, like, I have, you know, Eureka, Masters of Cinema, they released that film, I don't know, like three or four times or something, so, uh, I think I have all of them, or uh, the ones that I think exist, I'm not sure, but I have, you know, I, you know, it's, uh, it's really great, um, uh, Jovial Joss says, I watched the Stendhal Syndrome, oh, so speaking of Argento, yes, that was a great score, by the way, uh, the, uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, so, uh, oh, thank you, uh, Seth, for deleting uh, this message. This is some kind of uh, triple X site message. Thank you very much. I, I don't like these messages when they appear. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Mark says, if an alien landed on this planet and asked, what is cinema? This list is a great selection to show the medium. You know, it's a question that uh, I've, I've uh, thought about, which is, uh, speaking of one example, if... If a visitor from another planet came to the planet Earth and asked me, Daisuke, what is love? I would then show that person or that visitor from another planet the film Sunrise. And Sunrise indeed appears on the list. I think Sunrise is a great example of the, of, uh, the answer to the question, what is love? That or a matter of life and death. Um, let's see. One, two, three, rock fan. It's nice to see you. You say, not a big fan of Tokyo Story. Personally, I appreciate it though. Fair enough. That's, that's totally, totally legitimate, totally reasonable. Uh, thank you so much for that, my dear friend. Baptiste Andre continues. I'm glad the number one film of this list is a movie that represents a change in the history of cinema. Ooh, that's interesting, uh, way of uh, looking at it. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Mark, uh, responds about, uh, Jean Dillman, uh, 23 Kilo Commerce. Emile Cato van Brussel has uh, some. It has seven point six out of ten on IMDb. It, it, I don't know. I didn't know that about the IMDb ratings. Uh, but anyway, thanks for sharing that with me. Uh, let's see. Oh, Omesh is here. It's nice to see you. And Real Sirius is here. Hello from Argentina. Big fan of your channel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And that's very very kind of you. Um, let's see. Uh, Baptiste Andre says, "Is there a film on in the list that you haven't seen yet?" Now I want to catch up. I think actually, no, I've seen all the films on the list, at least the, the hundreds. Now, I don't know. I haven't seen what's beyond the top 100, but I, I looked through both lists and I, I didn't see anything that I haven't seen. So, um, yeah, I, I, haven't, I think I've seen all of them. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I have. So, very, very fortunate in that. Oh, yeah, it's also Wild Strawberries, right? Uh, it's on the director's list, but not on the uh, not on the critics list, I think, right? Or um, and also uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, same thing. Oh. Uh, interesting. Um, 
let's see, also Throne of Blood, too. It's uh, one of the great Chris Hall films. All right. Um, let's see. William is here. William Tatum is here. It's nice to see you. Uh, I also love moments of characters thinking in films. I think my favorite example may be the moment in The Godfather. Oh, yes. I know exactly what you're thinking about. Yes, yes. Uh, Mark says, I'm also very happy for EE. E. Uh, Hizzy is here. Hi, Mr. Dice. Oh, it's nice to see. Oh, you don't have to call me Mr. Dice. Daisuke is fine. You know, uh, uh, my friends call me Daisuke. So thank you so much. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, please call me Daisuke as, I, as uh, all my friends do. So it's nice to see you, Hizzy. I hope you're well. And uh, real serious, uh, do you prefer the original or, or 2014? Oh, yes, speaking of Blade Runner, I, I like both uh, in equal measure, in fact. Although I must say that uh, uh, there's uh, there's something very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, subversive about uh, Blade Runner. You know, I'm watching a film where I think I'm watching heroes, but in fact, I'm watching villains. It's, uh, it's kind of, and vice versa. So it's kind of uh, interesting. Uh, uh, role reversal that I'm always experiencing when I watch that film. Uh, let's see. Oh, home videos. It's nice to see you. Yes, Mishima should have at least been on one of those polls. Very interesting. Yes, Mishima lived in four chapters. Um, let's see, scrolling down. Um, uh, let's see. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, as mentioned by Seth Walsh? Uh, let's see. Jovial Just continues. I would have thought films like The Godfather Part Two or The Seventh Seal would be on there. Again, uh, there are, I think, a number of uh, films as well. Like, I think another title that emerged as part of the discussion, maybe Lawrence of Arabia or, or Raging Bull or something. Um, let's see, just scrolling down. Um, oh, Baptiste Andre says, in France this summer, there was a theater, theater re-release of La Maman et la Poutine. Oh, really? New restoration. Oh, in, in, in France. I didn't know that. In, this summer. Oh, that's, that's very... Oh, I didn't know that as well. Oh, well done. Well done. Uh, it's already restored. So Andoni uh, says, "Oh, thank you so much." Yes, I so I didn't know. I thought it was uh, I thought it was going to be released, but in fact, it already has been released. You have taught me something new, my dear friend. So thank you so much. We are still waiting for the physical media release. Thank you, thank you so much. So hopefully, it'll come sooner rather than later, and that's great because again, I hope as many people will get a chance to see this work as much as possible. I can't wait for that. Ming Dang is here. Hello, you say hi. Big fan. Love your Salo review. Oh, thank you so much. And Uncut Gems. Thank you. So oh, that's very kind. Thank you so much. Salo is a work that I think appears on the director's list, not on the critics list. I am, um, that's a, a, a discussion that I had a number of years ago on this channel. I must say, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very, uh, I'm very proud of that video discussion. Uh, so thank you so much for mentioning it. That really means a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Um, Oh, D. Uh, Blaze is here. You say, good morning, Daisuke. First time catching you live. Oh, that's really kind of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's nice to see you. Uh, William, you continue. You say, glad to see EE e. make this make it the list. Just I watched my first Edward Yang film, A Brighter Summer Day, and I thought it was great. I know you said it before. It's one of your favorite criterions. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, oh, great, great. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, Henry Bissell is here. Hello. You say, hi, Daisuke. Do you work at a creative job? You're very eloquent. Oh, that's very kind of you to say. Wow, I'm very flattered. No, I, I well, I guess, you know, I have, uh, I, I work um, uh, in terms of, uh, like, uh, how should I put it? I work in, like, a legal department of my company uh, in terms of, um, I used to work in a law firm uh, as, uh, you know, um, uh, with uh, a lawyer license, and so I guess I'm a, a, a qualified lawyer, at least uh, from you know with uh, from certain jurisdictions. Uh, and so uh, now I have uh, I don't uh, I'm not a practicing attorney in any way. I'm I'm working in terms of uh, uh, the legal department of my company and uh, examining contracts and the like. So in that way, perhaps it's not uh, immediately uh, what one might think is being quote unquote creative, but. In fact, I think uh, the the work of a lawyer or work of someone who who has a, a job in like legal uh, uh, legal department or legal uh, contract review, I think, or uh, contract drafting and the like, I think has there's a certain degree of creativity. In fact, a lot of creativity um, in, in that field, in a manner of speaking. But at the same time, I, I wouldn't regard myself as a kind of artist or anything. Uh, I wouldn't even regard myself as as any kind of good 
good, uh, any type of, uh, 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 I'm not so uh, uh, sharp. I'm not the sharpest. Uh, I'm not the sharpest. What's the? I'm not the sharpest knife in the in the. I don't know what to, to even say that. I'm not sure. But in any event, uh, I, I'm I'm pretty uh, pretty poor when it comes to my law lawyering skills or my legal review skills. But I always try to to uh, be on top of my game as much as I can. But uh, oh well, I guess part of the uh, the journey is uh, is in the endeavor. But thank you, Henry. That's very kind of you to say. Thank you. Um, let's see. William continues. He said, in terms of dream criterion releases, I would love to see Once Upon a Time in America, Everything Everywhere All at Once in the Hunt. Ooh, interesting. Um, uh, Seth says, what is love? <laughs> Certain SNL skit. Alonsi uh, is here. It's nice to see you. Thank you so much for your very kind super chat. I'm very, uh, very uh, flattered by this. I'm also very much, uh, uh, thank you so much uh, for that. You mentioned the Before Trilogy. So thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so uh, uh, very, very honored and very moved by this. Uh, and, and the this money will go uh, to purchasing a, a Blu-ray or, or, or the like. Uh, thank you so much. And you say regarding love. Uh, Gleaming uh, TV is here. So you mentioned the World Cup. Yes, yes, I know. Yes, very exciting in, uh, in uh, about an hour or so. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Juan is here. Hello, it's nice to see you. And you mentioned Latin American films are still underrepresented in the sight and sound poll. That's a very good point. Very, very good point. Um, you know, I'm not at all an expert uh, when it comes to uh, Latin American cinema, uh, but uh, there are uh, there are uh, areas, or there are uh, uh, areas, or categories, or um, uh, films that are definitely that can be said to maybe not have a strong representation as, say, other films that appear on the list. That's a very, very fair point. Uh, real serious, you say, uh, I've always wanted to watch Mishima since I'm a huge fan of Paul Schrader, but I'm worried that if I haven't read Yukio Mishima's works, the experience could suffer from it. Yeah, I would say that while I wouldn't call it an a definite, definite prerequisite to watching Mishima Life in four chapters, in other words, you don't necessarily have to have read the works of Mishima to be able to appreciate and really get into the film Mishima Life in Four Chapters. It's not a prerequisite by any stretch. However, I would say that it is, uh, it is, uh, it is very, I think, uh, it, it does enhance the experience, let me put it that way. And so if I could recommend maybe at least one or two works of Mishima that one can read, say, prior to watching Mishima Life in Four Chapters, I would recommend works like, for example, uh, it's known in English as Confessions of a Mask, or there's the, the work which is called uh, Temple of the Golden Pavilion. I would recommend one of those, uh, one or both of those, if possible. The Sharpest Tool in the Shed, thank you, Gleaming TV. That's that's exactly what I meant to say, but uh, it escaped me. But now you, you saved me, thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Arunaba, uh, Shom is your thank you. And you say, I loved your video when you talked about Gatak. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Dr. O, uh, is, uh, here as well. And you say, hope you're well, Daisuke. First time tuning in to one of your streams. Oh, thank you so much. That's very, I'm honored by that. Uh, with anime entries on the list, do you see the end of Evangelion finding, ooh, a spot in the future, ooh. <laughs> uh, that would be great if it did occur. I, I think uh, that's something too. Uh, animation. I think the animation works. Um, uh, what is it? The Ghibli films are there, but uh, right. It'd be interesting to see more animation films uh, if they could appear. Oh, uh, Jose Moreno Hernandez, you're no boon well. You're right, no boon well. A list means I can't take it seriously. Fair enough. That's fair enough. That's a uh, a good point to make. Uh, Omesh mentions also Millennium Actress. Yes, uh, thank you so much for this Omesh. And thank you for joining. Uh, it's always nice to see you, uh, my dear friend. Uh, my dear friends, indeed. Uh, so uh, let's see. I think um, it is almost 11 p.m. here where I am in Tokyo, Japan. So I might stick around for another five or 10 minutes. But maybe after that, start to get ready for bed. So uh, if you have any other comments you'd like to make, uh, please let me know. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, uh, Hookie Bricks Hookie is here. It's nice to see you. You say, hello, Daisuke. I just watched your presentation of uh, uh, Daisies. And now I have to see the movie. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. I just uploaded about an hour ago or so my video discussion on the Criterion release of Daisies, the Vera Hitalova film. Um, uh, and it's, uh, it's a discussion that I really got into. Uh, that's a, that is a wild work. That is such a wild work. It's, it's, um, it's, uh, so many ways, I think, to possibly read that film. So many ways. So, um, so thank you so much for that. And for, uh, and you say, thank you very much for another inspiration in the field of movie entertainment. That's very kind of you. Yes. Yes. Very, very kind of you to say. Lancy says, have you seen Crimes of the Future? You're, you're referring to the recent Cronenberg film, Crimes of the Future, right? Uh, yes, I have. I've seen it. Uh, I was uh, the only way I, I was able to see it was to get the Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray arrived whatever it was a few months ago or several months ago, and then I saw it. It was, it was amazing. It was amazing. I, I have this uh, ongoing Cronenberg discussion series that I admit I, it's it's stalled a little bit, but uh, because of certain uh, uh, certain uh, things that came up uh, last month that uh, kind of. Um, uh, made me feel totally out of, uh, I, I was not in the mood at all, uh, due to, uh, the loss of a very dear, uh, a close family member, my, my dearest Koharu, our family pet who passed away last month. And so, or the month before the end of October. And so, uh, you know, I was not, uh, it was a very difficult thing to try to get myself in the mood to talk about, uh, the films of De Palma and Cronenberg, but it's, so I stalled a little bit. Um, I'm going to hopefully try to pick that up. Uh, the plan is uh, I to catch up with all of the Criterion releases of 2022 that I have, uh, so that I can make it in time, so I can talk about all the 2022 releases by the by this month, which is already December, and then get ready for uh, what I hope to be like my oh my top 10 favorite Criterion release videos or something. So I'm gonna uh, prep for that. So uh, right now I am. I've just uploaded uh, 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 Jairo Bustamante's work uh, discussion on uh, La Llorona and also on uh, the Vera Hitalova work Daisies. And then next up will be the recent individual release uh, discussion of In the Mood for Love. It'll be brief because I've already discussed that film in the context of the Wong, uh, Wong Gar Wai uh, box set from last year. Uh, and then uh, The Power of the Dog, the Jane Campion uh, release uh, film release which was also a first time watch for me when the Criterion release came. Uh, and then Infernal Affairs. And then just today, uh, I re finally received in the mail, Wally -E and Malcolm X. So, uh, wow, wow. Uh, 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 oh gosh, Malcolm X. I am, I, I am so, uh, oh gosh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to save, save that. I'm going to save my, uh, my, excitement about that work Malcolm X when we uh, get a chance to talk about it but in any event yes um let's see oh Omesh says I was hoping to see Angelopolis yes I know me too uh, the traveling players or uh you mentioned eternity in a day or landscape in Missy. I agree I absolutely agree that's it, it's uh it's kind of heartbreaking not to see that but uh, maybe it's it's beyond the the top 100 maybe it's in the top 200 in that area I'd, I'd be still happy to see that but mark you say daisuke have you ever thought about having merchandise for your channel mugs t-shirts etc um actually uh yes you know i i have been uh, thinking about it a little bit not not so extensively but uh you know i i uh i have um uh, I've I've always wondered, you know, uh, or, or not not always, but uh, I sometimes see uh, some other YouTube channels, really huge YouTube channels, like much bigger than mine, and I have these uh, things about mugs or T-shirts. I thought oh, it would be really cool. What would be on the on the on the mug that I would probably sell as merchandise? I don't know. It would be uh, I don't, I have no idea what it, what it would be. Maybe some. I think I like the glasses motif, so I like maybe using the glasses motif, or maybe. Greetings from Tokyo or something like that. But uh, uh, that's an interesting idea. Um, um, it'll be, uh, anyway, something to think about. Um, uh, let's see, scrolling down here. Oh, Seth, the ice is going to break. Yes, reference to the dead zone. Uh, 
Let's see, Real Serious says, do you ever feel saturated by watching films like you need a break from being a cinephile? You know, actually, that's a good, good question. And indeed, somewhere on this channel, on this YouTube channel, I did have a video some years back. I was talking about a period in my life where I actually had a really serious bit of burnout when it came to cinema. So, and I talk about that. It was, it was actually a pretty big deal uh, in my life. And this was many, many years ago. Uh, so I don't know what the video, I forget the video's title, but it's somewhere on this channel. So I did speak about that. Do you ever get tired of films or do you ever need to switch off or, or something like that? So if you're interested, uh, I would, uh, I would, uh, 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 you know, uh, draw your attention to that video again, somewhere on the, I forget, I don't know what the title is. Uh, I, I'm kind of embarrassed to say, I don't remember, but, you know, but I do remember having that conversation. So uh, let's see. Uh, Heart of Cinema is here. It's nice to see you. Uh, no appearance of any Kislovsky, Herzog, Bunuel. We have four Coppola works. Uh, Rai, uh, some directors of Rai have consistently done very good films. Uh, Jay Canada is here. Yes, uh, nice to see Mulholland Drive and Apocalypse Now on the list. Um, uh, yes, uh, you love, oh yes, uh, what cut uh, is to be talking. You know, I, I, this has inspired me to actually maybe get around to one of the, one of my dream projects would be talking about apocalypse now. Maybe on that occasion, I might uh, might speak about my uh, reactions to the various versions. Uh, Seth Wall says I'm still mesmerized by my double life of Veronique, new favorite Criterion title in my collection. Oh yes, it's a very fascinating work. Um, uh, Axel is here. It's nice to see you. You say hope everything is well for you. Was very happy seeing Eraserhead getting onto the director's list. That's right, it is on the director's list. Um, it's like a little bit of heaven, right? And after all, as they say, in, heavy, in, he in heaven, right? Everything is fine. Uh, thank you so much. All right. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Juan, for the great list here. Black God, White Devil. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, let's see. Uh, a real series is so glad to hear about uh, that, about the burnout and that I'm not the only one. As a film student, gives me some comfort trying to get it back to heady films, uh, headier films recently. You know, it's all you, you know, you, there's so much time, uh, and film, you know, there's no rush, uh, so you can always uh, uh, go at it, go at your journey at your own pace and leisure, and that's very important, you know. Uh, that's something that I, I, uh, I've begun to appreciate more and more as I'm getting older, uh, so. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and Marcus to uh, Juan, thank you so much for this lecture. And I echo that uh, uh, feeling of thanks and gratitude to Juan. Thank you so much for that, my dear friend. Let's see. Um, I'd also add maybe Makunaima, uh, which has a good uh, Blu-ray release. I would always, oh gosh. But anyway, um, let's see. Mm. All right, I think we are almost at the end. I, if there are any more comments, I can stay for another five minutes um, and then uh, we can uh, be on our way. Oh, yes, also, sorry for the delay in the Twin Peaks discussions. That's going to come. Uh, Firewalk with me is coming, uh, just in case you're interested. Uh, yeah, Firewalk with me is coming. Uh, let's see. Uh, was there anything else that I was going to say? Anything else I was going to say? Um, I was going to say something, but I just forgot about it. Well, that, that I, I tend to do that a lot recently, but uh, it's okay. Oh, yes. So um, uh, it's, it is December, and so uh, maybe things might be busy. Uh, for people, things might be uh, maybe hectic. I'm not sure what the situation is for you where you are, but hopefully also it's a time for uh, remembering and for uh, 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 for reliving memories and for uh, being with loved ones and and enjoying uh, the time, uh, the festivities, the experiences, whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what your situation is, but for me, you know, I, I will be around uh, you know, through the end of the month, and uh, we'll just have some a time off from work, and uh, try to put in some time for videos. Again, my goal, my goal is to try to get all those criterion discussions uh, for 2022 
uh, done before the end of the month. So it'll be a bit of a, of a crunch at the end there. I, I admit uh, I had a big, big pile of Criterion titles that I've been slowly trying to get through in a very great way, of course. But, uh, uh, you know, since the release of the, uh, the Atom of Gawain work, Exotica, it's been just piling up. And so I'm just uh, trying how to get through uh, these discussions. But it's, it's, it's been great to go through them. Uh, they've been uh, really fascinating releases. So and then uh, the I was so happy. I was so, so happy to have been able to discuss the works in the Martin Scorsese World Cinema Project number four. I, I you know, I'm, I, I think, I, you know, my, I don't think my videos get that many views anyway. Uh, but uh, those videos in particular, I don't think get that many views among the videos uh, that I have on this channel that, I, that generally speaking, don't get a lot of views immediately. And that's okay. That's perfectly okay uh, because uh, it's, it's a part of the... That's part of my own, say, cinema journey is to go through them uh, in this way that I like to, and I'm comfortable with in this type of uh, manner of speaking that I, I, uh, I, I'm kind of engaged in. And so, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's always my hope that, uh, that the Martin Scorsese World Cinema Project films uh, get as much attention as possible. Uh, and in particular, that number four set, I mean, that is a brilliant set. Now, I might be spoiling things but i will tell you right now that there is at least uh there's there's going to be a if i'm talking about my top 10 favorite criterion films from 2022 you're going to see one of the films at least one of the films in that set make that top 10 list so uh yeah it's it's good it is a really good set uh and uh, so filled with life and meaning and so, oh my goodness, I can't stress enough how great that set is. So um, please check that out if you if you haven't already. It's really wonderful. And also, I must say, I was so. Uh, I I don't want to sound like I'm. I hope I'm not sound. I, I hope that doesn't sound like I'm bragging. If it does, please let me know in the chat, and I'll I'll very gladly stop. But I was so. Uh, I was very proud of the discussion with regard to the David Lynch film, Lost Highway. And that was a recent Criterion release uh, from earlier this year. I was very, very proud of that. You know, I'm, I'm, that's a film that, um, for a number of reasons, means a lot to me. And uh, I, I was very nervous, actually, going into trying to prepare. How am I going to talk about this film, Lost Highway? How can I begin to talk about this film? Especially trying to talk about it in a way that, that doesn't give away too much. So... That's one of the, the difficult things sometimes about doing uh, these discussions is trying to talk about it just enough, but not, not too much. So it's really difficult with a film like Lost, Lost Highway, to be perfectly honest. But I was very, was very happy with how it turned out. And I'm, I was, I was um, I, it gave me the opportunity to speak about my theory of David Lynch and, and the donut. Uh, and how I feel like the donut is one of the key images uh, in my ability or my attempt, not my ability, my attempt at trying to understand or unlock the mysteries of the works of David Lynch. It's all about the donut for me. So uh, I was uh, able at last to get that little bit of uh, my feeling about the donut into that Lost Highway discussion. So I was so happy to have been able to do that. So uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, I'm very, very excited I was very excited about that. Um, I'm very excited about that indeed. So uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Chev is here. Hello, you say greetings, Daisuke. Apologize if this was already asked, but did you see Paul Schrader's comments about the new number one and the legitimacy of the poll? Were you interested to hear? No, I haven't seen these comments, actually. I don't know uh, what uh, what what uh, what the comments were. Um, I'll try to check it out after this live stream is over, but... Uh, I'll be honest, to be perfectly honest, I've been a little bit behind the times when it comes to uh, recent reactions or news of the poll. I've just been focusing on my how to how to process uh, the the poll uh, entries themselves. So, um, uh, but I mean, I go back to my original uh, comments at the start of this uh, 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 live stream, which is that it's totally okay to disagree with this list. It's totally great, okay to not not even. Uh, regard this list with any type of degree of uh, sense of importance. It's totally okay. Not a, not a problem at all. Um, I mean, uh, it's like what um, what uh, 
uh, William Shatner, uh, James T. Kirk says uh, in one of the Star Trek films, you know, a ship is a ship, right? So a list is a list, whatever that means. So uh, let's see. Uh, Heart of Cinema says, when will your discussions on Twin Peaks continue? Uh, really interested in your views of the Twin Peaks events series. So it'll come very soon. It'll go in order. It's, there was a little bit of delay because of certain personal uh, personal things that came up, but it'll it'll occur. So thank you so much for continuing to have an interest in in, uh, in that Twin Peaks discussion series, my dear friend. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Christmas films. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, Christmas films. Uh, it reminds me that uh, uh, you know, I, I remember uh, seeing uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night when I was a kid, when it first was arrived on VHS. That was an eye-opener. That was a real eye-opener. Wow. Gosh. Um, let's see. Uh, Hookie Bricks Hookie mentions the uh, the World Cup. Yes. Yes. Um, Omesh mentions the new uh, version of All Quiet in the Western version. No, I haven't seen this yet. Looking forward. I'm. I'm also looking forward to. I just recently saw. Uh, I recently saw the film um, Knives Out, not the new film Glass Onion, but the film Knives Out. So I didn't see that before, but I now saw it recently. I. I kind of enjoy. I enjoyed that type of film. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, that that new one uh, on Netflix. I think. Um, Yes, uh, Axel mentions, very glad seeing In the Mood for Love so high on both lists as well. One of my absolute favorites. Well done. Uh, oh, Lancy, yes, thank you very much. Yes, we also, you and I spoke about the donut. Yes, thank you in, in that wonderful interview conversation that uh, uh, you had. Thank you. I was very honored by that. So thank you very much. Uh, Lancy, you can uh, leave a link to your great website, by the way, if, uh, if you want to in the, in the chat. Uh, it's a great website. I hope uh, people check it out, as many people check it out as possible. Please feel free to, to leave it uh, a link there. All right. Um, let's see. William also mentions Knives Out. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, it's, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. So uh, any last-minute comments? Any anything at all? Uh, Bueller, Bueller. I saw Ferris Bueller's Day Off in the movie theater when it was uh, when it first released, uh, and ever since then, I whenever I have gummy bears, uh, those candies, the gummy bears, I always think of, of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. For anyone who knows that scene of the gummy bears and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so. Uh, and flicking the gummy bear, you know, that's really cool. Anyway, uh, all right. Uh, thoughts on Sam Fuller? Yes. Uh, where to begin? Um, uh, that was another dream project I was thinking about, which was the Sam Fuller, uh, Sam Fuller discussion. Uh, maybe it'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be forthcoming. Who knows? But. Uh, Juan, thank you so much, Juan. That was uh, really kind of you. Uh, uh, for that list and the recommendations and your your comment about uh, you know Latin American cinema, uh, uh, really well taken. I, I'm I'm very 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 happy about uh, reading and reading your list. Thank you. Um, all right, so I am uh, I'm I've got a I'm starting to I'm sorry I'm starting to feel a little bit sleepy, so I must. I must go. Oh, ben, Benjamin Mays here. Thank you so much. Um, um, you mentioned uh, Mike. Oh, oh, very good. Um, uh, yes, weird, wonderful. Uh, those are two adjectives that I can totally, totally agree with. Uh, thank you so much for that. Sorry about not being able to expand on on uh, on the discussion here, Benjamin. Uh, great comment here. Um, but uh, you know, maybe we can have a continuing conversations. Uh, oh, hey, isn't that Devin Graham? So thank you. You just made it just in time. I'm about to close out this uh, session, but uh, you made it just in time. So it's nice to see you. Thank you. Yes, it's evening here. It's, it's past 11 p.m. where I am. So I'm getting a little sleepy, but uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 getting ready for uh, uh, for some World Cup uh, actions. 
Uh, any event, my dear friends, uh, I think we can leave it uh, there for now, if that's okay. Uh, once again, thank you so much. I want to say thank you again to uh, Sucked and to Lonzi for your lovely Super Chat mon money donations. I'm very much appreciative of it. Um, it's very, very uh, kind of you. And, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, my, my, uh, my monthly budget, my own personal spending amount has uh, decreased somewhat due to a number of factors, including, uh, including uh, uh, exchange rates and the like. So uh, my, the value of my spending buck has diminished somewhat. So I'm, I'm not able to make as many purchases as I would otherwise like to. So these sorts of don donations are very, very helpful. And they go towards uh, uh, making those sorts of purchases. So thank you so much for that, my dear friends. Uh, very, very kind of you. I'm totally, totally undeserving of it. Really, I am. So uh, but uh, thank you for considering uh, me in that way. Uh, and uh, so uh, warmest, warmest regards to all of you. And we'll see each other again very, very soon. Um, once again, um, uh, just a number of things, you know, I did uh, have a recent interview discussion with uh, Mondo Chelovic movies. This is John, our dear friend. Uh, so please, if you haven't checked out his great channel, you know, Mondo Chelovic, please check it out. It's really, really cool. Uh, we had a nice discussion. We talked about things like like video nasties and living in uh, the 80s, uh, you know, UK and going to video stores. And it was really, really cool. I had so much fun. So check out that channel. Check out uh, this great channel. It's, it's really wonderful. And then also I'm going to try to... Uh, uh, to put up more of those Criterion 2022 release discussions as much as possible. So next up is In the Mood for Love, but it's going to be kind of brief. It's going to be referring to a previous discussion I had made about the box set. And also next is The Power of the Dog, and then Infernal Affairs, George, and then uh, Malcolm X, and then Wally uh, coming up. So uh, very uh, excited indeed. So uh, with that... Um, uh, Oh, and also, yes, I uh, just uploaded, I just uploaded a few hours ago, uh, discussions on La uh, Llorona and also uh, Daisies. And so uh, please uh, check that out. And I must say, so La Llorona was a first time watch for me. It was really mesmerizing, quite a, a deep, a deep uh, kind of horror film that is so much. It's, it's also reckoning with history, as I mentioned in that video discussion. So La Llorona well worth checking out. And then Daisies, Vera Hitilova's work, Daisies. It also appears on the uh, the critics list, by the way, Daisies, uh, around the, the 20s or so, I think, or 30s or 20s or so. Uh, so it's in the top 50. And so, ah, oh, if you have not seen Daisies, please, please give it a chance. Please give it a chance. It is, it's it's not very long. I mean, it's it's about, I think, 70 or 80 minutes or so running time. So it, it's relatively speaking on the shorter side of things. It goes by so quickly. It's so fun. It's so, it's, it's so chaotic. It is, it is cinema chaos in the best sense of that term. So please check that out if you can. All right, my dear friends. So I'm going to head off now. So have a great rest of the day, evening, afternoon, whatever the case is for you, wherever you are in the world, please continue to take very good care of yourselves and your loved ones. This is the most important treasure, as always. And once you've taken care of all those important uh, points, my dear friends, as always, please, 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 please continue. Please continue to keep on watching a lot of great, great, great movies. That's what it's all about, you know, our mutual love for this wonderful thing. Ow, this mutual love for this wonderful thing. I just hit my finger against the table there. It's okay. This mutual love that we all have for this thing, this wonderful thing, which is called cinema. All right. And so with that, uh, thank you so much, my dear friends, and see you at the next one. So until then, cheers. <laughs>